protect him. Whatever I do, I do it to protect you. So you understand? I understand. The world is coming undone. Hey guys, I'm the Jedi Master and welcome to my full spoiler filled review over Rogue One, a Star Wars story. State your name for the record. Jin Erso. That's an impounded Imperial ship. What's your call sign, pilot? Rogue One. Rogue One was a fantastic film. Everything in it from the cinematography to the special effects to the sound design to the acting just comes together in this amazing film that is a welcome part of the franchise in my personal opinion. So the film starts out on a unnamed planet at first where a Imperial ship lands and Jin Erso's mother, the female lead, the protagonist of the story, Lyra Erso, goes to warn her husband Galen Erso and hides Jin and then the mother calls Saw Guerrara who is a family friend of theirs that the Imperials have come. Galen leaves and goes and talks to the Imperial officers and then at, shortly afterwards the mother is shot and killed after the stormtroopers start storming the area after Galen lies and says that his wife and daughter are not there. Okay, so we're going to jump a little bit farther ahead. We're not going to jump to the next thing happens. Just know that it's 15 years later in the film. Jin is now an adult being played by Felicity Jones. And she is now being transferred but with a bunch of other prisoners. And she gets saved by K2SO and Cassian. After being rescued by Cassian and K2SO and a few of the other rebel forces, Jin is brought before Mon Mothma and the other rebel leaders to ask her about her father Galen or so. She says that she had only seen her dad 15 years prior, which was during the time that her home was stormed. So the rebels offer Jin a deal to help them find Saw Gerrera because he might be the one person who knows where Galen is. If she agrees, she's free to go. So Cassian, K2SO, Jin, and Chirrut and Baze are captured by Saul's crew after a scuffle that happens with stormtroopers and a terrorist act that comes from Saul's group. They're captured by the stormtroopers and thrown into cells and Jin is now taken to see Saul. She confronts him and talks about how he screwed up her childhood and everything and Saul ends up showing Jin a hologram of her father saying that he went to the Empire and to help destroy the weapon called the Death Star, which is what's what got made in this film. He says that he made a failsafe that can explode it and to save the rebellion and save the dream. Out of nowhere, the Imperials on the Death Star attack a small part of Jeddah, causing an explosion to happen and Jin is saved by Cassian as she is broken down and crying in about seeing her father once again. Saw is left behind because he has a weakness. So they go to Edu where Galen is supposed to be meeting with an Imperial officer and Cassian is told to kill Galen, but for Jin is told that they're trying to s extract him. However, Cassian does not follow his orders. He ends up not shooting Galen during this tumultuous scene. But the rebels come in and they bomb the entirety of this facility on Edu, causing Galen to die and Jin to be heartbroken. So Cassian, K2SO, and Jin head back to Yavin 4. They talk about how they have to infiltrate the data facility to get the plans to kit to destroy the Death Star. So the rebel leaders ultimately decide that it's not a good idea. So this is where the meat of the thing comes in is that there are rebel rebel rogues hence Rogue One, where they take a unauthorized ship off of Yavin 
and they go to get the Death Star plans, which ensues everything to go down. They arrive on Scarif to get the Death Star plans from the Data facility with a bunch of other rebel dissidents, including Bazin Churit, as I said before. K2SO fights off stormtroopers as Cassian and Jin both go into the data facility to get the Death Star's plans. However, this is the point where stuff really starts happening. The rogues start to fall as they are being outnumbered, even though they get even more support from the Rebel Alliance. K2SO ensures that Cassian and Jin are 100% safe while fighting off stormtroopers before he dies. Towards the very end, the Death Star is shoots Scarif and destroys it, killing both Jin and Cassian as they hug in a very tear-jerking scene. But not before Jin is able to f get the data transmitted over to the Rebel Alliance thanks to them opening up a hole in the field on Scarif from the Rebel Alliance hitting the hole with everything they have. The film ends on a very somber and sad note, however it shows that it links up to maybe moments before A New Hope happens and we see a CGI Carrie Fisher rest in peace, as well as Darth Vader killing off several rebel troopers. So the biggest thing that this film starts with, and it just changes up the formula and lets you know that this is not part of the main series, is that this takes place in a galaxy far, far away, and it even says a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but then cut. There's no opening crawl. It just jumps right into the action, and it's a very shocking thing at first. Whenever you first watch it, you're just going to be jarred by that scene. I know I was. I was just like, where's the opening crawl? That's what that's what Star Wars... I know from Star Wars is that it has an opening crawl, but it's a extended universe movie. The first one, really, to be in the extended universe, unless you count clone, the terrible Clone Wars movie. But this is really the first time that we've seen the extended universe with a different set of characters with some cameos from the main characters in the movie it's really good to see that star that star wars and disney are branching out through this path doing all this kind of stuff i'm extremely happy for it so the entirety of this film is very well made and it's it really and you get to know these characters through their backstories and you get to know them because Cassian has a good heart but he had orders and he decided to not follow those orders and Jin's a rebellious person because she had to be abandoned a long time ago and was trained by this really hard up military kind of person and you see that she ha she's a very tough character, but you see that she also has this softer side to her. I personally believe that all the actors did so well with their respective roles. K2SO was funny. He had a lot of humor and so sometimes unintentional. Jin was very realistic. Felicity Jones did a very good job as her. And Diego Luna as Cassian was amazing. He was the... He was the perfect parallel to Jin to have on screen. The sound design was absolutely fantastic. The it, it had music revving up in places and obviously like every other Star Wars film the sound design just sounded very amazing. The special effects were absolutely awesome. It was very well made and I would definitely recommend going out and seeing it unless you're not a huge Star Wars fan. Now I'm going to get, I am going to talk about that. If you are not a huge Star Wars fan, you just like the main series, think it's fun, you think it's cool and all that kind of stuff. This is a lot different. There's not a ton of jet there's not Jedi. Though well, there's one Jedi and there's one Sith. Darth Vader and Chudrit are the Jedi and the Sith. However, Chudrit never uses a lightsaber and there's not much forced action, there's not lightsaber battles and all that kind of stuff. It's a lot of blasters, a lot of explosions, a lot of ships flying, a lot of everything like that. And it's there's also some politics that goes in it shows that 
the Rebel Alliance isn't, it's not as black and white, which is something that I've always appreciated about the extended universe, is that it shows that it's not black and white, there's not good and evil, there's a little bit of gray, the Rebel Alliance isn't perfect, but neither in the, the Empire is not, is not 100% pure evil there's always this very good there's always this gray area that happens in between and everything with it it just makes it a very astounding film overall i would recommend seeing it if you are a star wars fan or you enjoy or you just enjoy star wars in general and if you're not so much into star wars if you just watch the films because they're popular and you kind of like them do not really hard up on them I wouldn't recommend this, however, it's still a very good film. But anyway, I'm going to give you guys my final conclusion on this. I'm going to have to give this 4 out of 5. This is an absolutely astounding film. Not as good as The Force Awakens was, however, I still really enjoyed this. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, give it a drop a like on it. Helps out a lot. Tell a friend today about my Star Wars channel, it's pretty awesome, and may the Force be with you, always.